R.I.P. to Michael K. Williams and all the fallen soldiers, women and men that have uh, succumbed to drug usage. R.I.P. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Michael K. Williams was a phenomenal actor. Uh, from what I've seen through interviews uh, and, and um, his personal interviews and the interviews of others that have spoken on him, a beautiful person, a beautiful humanitarian. And uh, yeah, that's the energy that comes off the screen every time I see him, just a beautiful human being uh, that unfortunately could not tame or conquer this darkness. And uh yeah, it's, uh, as you know, reports have been out there that uh, he died from a, a cocaine overdose. And his cocaine was laced with fentanyl. Now, for you who don't know, fentanyl is 100 times stronger than morphine. You know, if you ever had morphine in the hospital, you know, that's pretty strong. So fentanyl is 100 times stronger than morphine. And so that, that shouldn't be cutting cocaine at all. Uh, and, and the reason for this, uh, where cocaine has been cut with fentanyl is because the dealers, you know, they're, they're, they're panicking and uh, they're trying to get that, that retention customer, that customer uh, that comes back. And so right now the cocaine is so um, pure, man. The purity level of cocaine is so low that uh, in order to get that customer to come back and retain that customer, they got to cut it. They got to cut their cocaine with something potent. Uh, the problem is, I don't know if they know how powerful fentanyl is, but uh, that shouldn't be used at all to cut cocaine. Um, and man, this, this story uh, of Michael K. Williams overdosing, DMX overdosing, this this thing with fentanyl being a big thing on the streets uh, as a cutter, as a cutting agent, man, that just reminds me of Drink Six and a Toast to the Man. Love is law. And I touch on prohibition back in the 1920s, how uh, alcohol was outlawed and uh, prohibited to, uh, to be manufactured or sold and a black market was created. Now within that black market, you got people who were creating alcohol with agents that were unsafe. You know, so you got the dealer being greedy, creating alcohol from agents that are unsafe and you got the user who's addicted and they don't, they don't even care. They just need that fix. As a result, many people died during that time period, and many people went blind. And the government turned a blind eye to it. A lot of them didn't care. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the faith-based organizations uh, didn't have a lot of love towards the user or the dealer. And so I think that's what's going on today with fentanyl. Uh, I don't think the government really cares. And uh, you got, a, you got a, a user who doesn't love themselves and respect themselves and doesn't know why they're here. And then you got a dealer who doesn't truly love themselves or respect themselves and who's driven by greed and survival by any means necessary. You know, until these people are in the same bucket, clashing, and uh, they're both dying. And I don't know if anyone cares, but uh, this video is going to, I'm going to touch on a few things, man. So, so you got one thing with the addiction, right? There are a lot of drug addicts out there and there are a lot of addicts in different things, period. But right now we're talking about drugs. I, I want to touch on that. Because I have a theory. Um, like I said, Michael K. Williams uh, seemed like a, a beautiful human being. 
Uh, by all accounts, what people say was a beautiful guy who just struggled. And he was very open about his struggles with drug addiction. And um, he also was very open about being a survivor of uh, molestation as a child. And, and that's where I want to go with this. Um, I've been around a lot of drug addicts different kind of addicts, some just in passing. Uh, some some my friends, I guess you can call them functioning drug addicts, but they are, uh, I consider them friends uh, in a period of my life. I've personally never consumed drugs. Um, yeah, I'll just say that drugs have never entered my body. And, uh, I've been around it, been around it, been at parties where uh, people were openly, you know, snorting, been at parties where people were openly popping pills. I've been in homes, the environment. I've been, it's been all around me. Like I said, some of my boys did it. Uh, I never did it. Uh, my boys wouldn't offer it to me. I guess they just knew my personality and how I was wired, but uh, it has been offered to me through someone, through a stranger who entered our circle or came to our table and didn't know me. And, you know, I've always rejected it, <clears throat> but, uh, and it wasn't hard to reject it, you know? And I, I think sometimes I'm like, man, how was I able to say no, you know, and not consume it, but others could not. Uh, I think about that sometimes, and uh, I don't know, man. I think um, I think certain things had an effect on me, things I saw at an early age. I, I vividly remember the whole campaign uh, pushed by, uh, Nancy Reagan, just say no to drugs. I remember that. Or this is your brain on drugs commercials. I remember that. And uh, I don't know if that had an effect on me, uh, but it was just never appealing to even try it. You know, I know they say things that uh, we make taboo, taboo uh, influences us or makes us curious to try it, see what it's about, but not, not with me. Uh, I remember heading to a party with my homeboys. We're about 15, 16. And there was a, a group in a car in front of us. And a uh, dude just wrecked out in front of us and uh, ran off into a ditch. And uh, it, was, it was a pretty bad uh, wreck in that ditch. Uh, he, he banged inside that ditch. Uh, pretty hard. So man, his crew gets out and the driver gets out and he's bleeding down his head, uh, towards his forehead. I mean, it's, it's just coming down, right? Now, by this time, we're close to the club. And so uh, we see it, you know, we see the wreck ahead of us. So we, we veer around it and we just head over uh, into the parking lot of the club. Man, about 10 minutes later, we see the crew had just had a, a wreck uh, walking up. And the driver, he's bleeding. And I'm like, damn. I said, man, <laughs> I'm telling my boys, like, man, you're not going to go to the hospital? And I remember one of my boys saying, oh, he's on there. He's on there wet. He's on that water. And, uh, you know, basically PCP. Uh, and I remember thinking, man, I do not want that. Cause I saw that wreck and I'm like, if it gets you to the point where you don't feel and you can have a wreck like that and you bleeding down the club, bleeding down the head and you don't even care and you still headed to the club, I want no part of that. And, uh, 
I was like 15 to 16 then. So I know that had a big impact on me seeing that. But uh, just within myself, I like to remain in control. Um, I don't like to be out of control. I don't like to be taken advantage of. So I've seen guys being taken advantage of when they were under influence. I'm talking about strong guys. Guys who had boxing game. Guys who had hands. Guys who were normally respected being mollywopped and taken advantage of when they were under the influence of drugs, man. I never wanted that to happen to me. And I'm always in protective mode. Like, if you're with me, <clears throat> if you're my friend, if you're my girl, man, if you in my presence, you're with me, I just feel responsible, you know, that, that everyone's safe. And you can't protect anyone when you're under the influence of, of drugs. And so, uh, yeah, I guess those were deterrents of why I never tried it, you know. Uh, but like I said, some of my boys, they indulged, you know. They indulged. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. But what I have noticed, guys and, and women who get addicted, when somebody addicted to it, that, where they have to have it, uh, and not the ones that are just experimenting, trying things. I'm talking about the ones that have to have some kind of substance in their bodies to cope. In, in my dealings with these people, man, these people have suffered trauma in their childhoods. I'm talking about some deep trauma, abuse, physical, mental, sexual abuse. Uh, I've noticed that being a pattern that being the uh the common denominator is trauma uh now you do like i said you got some people that are just dibble and dab and experiment and, and they'll never try it again uh not those people i'm talking about the people that have to have a substance in them and a lot of these people have been putting substances in them at an early age from an early age i'm talking about 11 12 13 14 some younger but I'm telling you, all of them have experienced trauma. And uh, Michael K. Williams, very open about being molested. Trauma, trauma. Uh, I'm telling you, if that trauma isn't dealt with and faced head on, it's going to, uh, it's not going anywhere because it's energy. So you can't kill it. But you got to transfer it. You got to put it into something else, something healthy, and, and you can change it up, right? You can redevelop it, and uh, but it has to be dealt with. It has to be faced head on. Um, and I think he was trying to do that off and on. In the later part of his life, he was trying. He spoke. He spoke on this. It's about his struggles, and uh, you know, he never said he was a, a former drug addict. <clears throat> or a drug abuse, drug abuser survivor, or a former addict. He never said that, but he did say he was a, a survivor of molestation, right? Uh, so, I mean, he was honest. He, he knew this was a struggle of his, and um, I don't think he could get past that trauma. And I talk about this often. Man, when people are molested, man, the people I've come across, um, or the stories I've read, or, or the stories I've heard, man, they either put it in uh, drugs or they, they cope with it through drugs or they have to transfer their energy off to other people. When they say hurt people, hurt people, I mean, that's that's true to, to a point unless you deal with the hurt. And so that's where you can get these people who were touched or molested at a young age. And if they don't deal with it, they may not go the route of drugs, but they'll go a route of molesting other people, you know, other children when, when they become adults. And so it's a tricky thing. And like I said, man, when you get older, when you become a grown person, especially a grown man, nobody cares what you went through through your childhood. 
if you start hurting young kids. Um, I think we do have a, a bit more sympathy for drug addicts. Uh, there's programs out there. But the sad part of that is, you know, this is a billion, multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, yeah, illegal drug use or, or legal drug use is is a, a multi-billion dollar industry. I mean, let's just take um, illegal drugs. So the dealer's making money. <clears throat> uh, the addict needs money. So they're stealing, they're robbing, right? Kill if they have to. Uh, you got the jail system. The dealer is going to get caught eventually, right? So you got the jail system, you got the parole system, you got the probation system, depending on the level of the crime, uh, what they were caught with, what they agreed to. Uh, so you have that money being circulated over there. So now you got the drug user. They go to jail, three hots in a cot, or they go to rehab. Man, that's a lot of money in rehab, a lot of money in recovery. Uh, to be made. The lawyers are getting paid. The judge is getting paid. Got everybody, the DA, everybody involved. You know, the clerk, everybody, the police officers. You got to have more police on the scene. So taxes are raised in the city. Man, it's just money circulating from drugs, all from drugs. And uh, I'm not sure if there's a concerted effort to eliminate drugs or to cure the problem. I'm not really sure. You know, why would uh, a corrupt system get rid of something that's making them so much money? You gotta question that. Is there a concerted effort to rid this nation of uh, drug abuse, to do the deep healing we need? But, uh, you know, I think the drug use, the drug addiction is just a result or a byproduct of deeper trauma. Yeah, we got to deal with that trauma. Um, we got to give people a safe place to open up about their trauma. Uh, this goes even for the offender, the sexual offender. They got to be able to open up. And uh, I think Michael K. Williams spoke on this. Like, even the offender got to have a safe place to open up and say, hey, I ain't feeling good. Hey, I'm thinking about thinking about doing something to a child. They have to have that free space. Uh, or, you know, that energy, that dark energy is going to come out some kind of way. They're going to act on it. You know, um, I think Jay-Z said, uh, we can't heal what we can't reveal. So when you hide things, when you hide hurts, when you hide darkness and trauma, and you can't reveal it, or you don't have that safe place to reveal it, you can't heal it. And so we got to give people that safe that safe place to, uh, to talk about it, to get the treatment they need. But then on the other hand, you, you, as an offender, if an offender is watching this, you as an offender got to be open and honest and uh, make a concerted effort to fight those demons. Uh, the abused, you know, uh, you have a responsibility too to, to open up, to speak, you know. Um, if someone doesn't know it's there, you know, how can they pull it out? But the first thing is to, to speak. You know, find that person or that community or that service you feel comfortable with and speak. But we got to we gotta kill this thing, man, from the root. And it comes with abuse and trauma. And the drugs are a byproduct of that. Uh, deep trauma. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we can do it. But it, it's going to take love. It's going to take love people caring about other people outside of themselves. Um, it's going to take us identifying with people, perceiving ourselves and other people, and just knowing that now we are all, we are one, 
just with different bodies and different perspectives and experiences, but we are one, uh, one spirit. Uh, and if it affects you, it affects me and vice versa. So, uh, yeah, let's deal with that trauma, y'all. Let's deal with that trauma. Let's give people the open space and place to speak on it, to reveal it so they can heal it. And uh, let's speak out. Let's speak out and support one another. There are a lot of hurt people out there, a lot of trauma. And uh, it's going to take all of us, all of us to heal that trauma, heal that hurt. And then, and then we can attack the drugs or the drugs usage may just die down. I, I know it will. If we can heal the trauma, the hurt, I know the drug usage will die down uh, and the drug addiction will die down, right? But uh, that's where it comes, that's where it starts first, treating each other right. All right, as always, from me to you, love, peace.